Hi guys, so this, is, this video we're going to be going over Gibbs free energy. Um, so this is a pretty important uh, topic in uh, equilibrium and just generally how reactions progress. So we're going to start off by defining what Gibbs free energy is. So Gibbs free energy has a pretty technical definition. It's basically the thermodynamic potential that be can be used to calculate the maximum amount of work that must be performed within a closed system. So this sounds complicated, but don't worry, you don't need to memorize the definition. What you do need to know, though, is what the values of Gibbs free energy represent. So Gibbs free energy can be represented by delta H. And delta H we can see over here, for example, in this equation I've just put over here. So delta H represents Gibbs free energy. You might also see it with this sign on top. Whatever the case is, you should know how to interpret it. So basically, if delta G is negative, so if it's negative, that means it's spontaneous. And a spontaneous reaction, you might know, is a reaction which can take place um, under, the under the given conditions without any interference or without any um, external energy required. So a non-spontaneous reaction, which is when Gibbs free energy is positive, is when the reaction needs a little bit more external energy or input required in order for it to take place in the given conditions. So to calculate the Gibbs free energy, we know there's one key equation here. Before we go into the different ways you can calculate it, the first one is delta G of the entire reaction is the sum of delta G's product of the products minus the sum of delta G of the reactants. So it's a bit like, you know, enthalpy cycles where you have products minus reactants and um, you do so by looking at the given equation. It'll typically tell you what the Gibbs free energy is for each of the products and for each of the reactants, or if not, you can always just go and check in the data booklet. All right, now let's get into the, some of the equations that you can use to calculate Gibbs free energy. So the first one we have over here is delta G um, is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So let's unpack what G, each of them are. So obviously delta G is Gibbs free energy because that's what we're trying to solve for. Then delta H is the enthalpy of the reaction. So this can be determined experimentally, and then you can use Q equals MC delta T and the moles in order to calculate the enthalpy of the reaction. Whatever the case is, that's what it represents. Delta S is the entropy of the reaction in its given conditions. So entropy, of course, being the amount of order within substances and um, reactions and systems, then T is temperature. It's important to recognize here that temperature is represented in Kelvin and enthalpy of the reaction is in kilojoules per mole and um, the entropy of the reaction is also in kilojoules per mole. And the Gibbs free energy that you get is also in Gibbs, um, is in kilojoules per mole. Um, so, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at delta H, delta S, T, and delta G under the following conditions. So I've, there are actually many more ways you can order these. However, I've only put the main ones in here. So for example, another way you could order it is if T was lower, like it was if it was indicated by its red arrow. But these systems, I'll show you why we don't need to include them. So let's go into the first one. So if delta H is positive and delta S is positive and T is a high value, what would delta G come out to be? Well, what we can already tell is that it's going to be delta H minus T delta S. And therefore, um, if we're assuming that this is positive, this is positive, and this is a high value, we can also assume that T delta S is going to be greater than delta H. And therefore, the Gibbs free energy is going to be negative. Um, if we take them both to be negative, so delta H, um, it becomes delta H negative delta H plus T delta S, and T is lower, that is still going to be negative because then this will, will be assumed to be greater than T delta S, so you can say it's negative. Um, so if we go to the other scenarios, let's say that they're both positive but T is lower. Um, in that case, it would be um, delta G would be positive and non-spontaneous as a result just because um, the side containing T would be lower than the side containing delta H. So that's just something to keep in mind and vice versa when it comes to this row. So let's just go to the next one where if delta H is negative, so delta H is negative, that means we have negative delta H now, minus um, T 
delta s and in this case delta s is positive so we have t delta s this over here we can see is entirely negative it does not matter how large or small the value of t is this will always be negative therefore we can say that delta g would be negative here and now if we look at our final value which is if delta h is positive and delta s is negative then we have delta h plus t delta s and this will always be positive regardless of what delta regardless of what t is so therefore this is positive and as you can see these are the different ways you can evaluate gibbs free energy and figure out if it's negative or positive it's very important that you like know this table and generally how it works and how to manipulate the equation because this is a very common thing that they might ask within exams that's why i just flagged this up all right i'll just make sure the units are there and this is typically in kj per mole. These are just some important units to keep note of. Then, typically, entropy is represented by joules per mole, but in this case, you want to try and make it agree with all the other units in here. Okay, now let's go to question two. Well, not question two, rather, equation two. So delta G is equal to negative RT ln K. And I've just written a note here saying that ln K, um, the K inside ln K is also the same as KC. And if you remember an equation, let's say we had, um, if we had H2, 2H2 plus O2 makes 2H2O, the KC of the reaction would make sure that it'd be, po it'd be po products over reactants with their coefficients um, as the power. So for example, the KC of this reaction would equal H2O squared over H2 squared times O2. That would be the KC of the reaction. And then you would have typically the values you can substitute in. In many different equations, though, they might just tell you outright what the equilibrium constant is, in which case you would just substitute into the equation. So let's just debunk this. Let, not debunk, but rather, let's just go deeper into this for a bit. So R is the ideal gas constant. So this you might have seen this in PV equals NRT. But basically, the ideal gas constant is equal to 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. So that's just a value you just need to substitute in. doesn't matter. It's not a variable. It's just a value. Then T is equal to the temperature. Again, this is in Kelvin. And then K, of course, is the equilibrium constant. And this one, the units kind of shift depending on the reaction you have equilibrium constant so it's not fair to just add a um add a, add units to this so key things to keep in mind are about the values of k so i'm just going to drag this up so the values of k are important to keep in mind just so that we know if this reaction is spontaneous or not so if k is greater than one well that would mean that ln of k so if you substitute one in there greater than one that means ln of k would be a positive value, and therefore negative rt ln k would be a negative value, since you have the negative value over here, and t can't be negative anyway. So therefore, Gibbs free energy would be negative, and therefore this is spontaneous. Now if k is equal to 1, ln k would equal ln 1, and ln 1 is 0. So delta g would equal 0, and therefore it's neither spontaneous nor non-spontaneous. And then if k is less than 1, but greater than 0, um, obviously, it can't be um, less than zero just because ln of negative value is not possible to evaluate. But if it's in between this region, ln k would be negative. A negative times a negative is a positive value, and therefore, negative rt ln k would equal a positive value. So that would be a non-spontaneous reaction. And that's just something to keep in mind with this equation here. Now, question, well, not question again. Equation three is delta g is equal to negative nf e naught of the cell. So e naught of the cell is basically the cell potential. Now, this is covered a little bit more in electrochemistry, but if you have um, a voltaic cell or an electrolytic cell, it will have a cell potential where you look at the reduction and oxidation reactions and therefore determine the e naught of the cell. Um, so that video would probably go into more detail about what that is. Then n is the number of moles of electrons transferred so obviously it becomes obvious that this constant uh, this um, equation over here is mostly applicable to electrochemistry because it's to do with the exchange of electrons and the cell potential so this is the equation you would use if you want to find Gibbs free energy in that then you have Faraday's constant which is re represented by f so Faraday's 
constant. And this is basically equal to 96485. So you can kind of round this off. But 96485 um, coulombs per mole. So obviously this is very much energy related. You just substitute 96485 in there. You don't really need to do anything else. Again, F is a bit like R in terms of it has a specific value. It's just represented by a variable in this case when it's not. Um, and yeah, that's basically all of the different reactions that you have with Gibbs free energy. Just substitute them into the equation at like so, and you'll be able to um, get your value of Gibbs free energy. Again, remember that negative Gibbs free energy is spontaneous, positive is non-spontaneous, and zero is neither of the two. Um, so another good metric to look at is that if Gibbs free energy is greater than 30 um, kilojoules per mole, that's typically an indicator that this reaction is um, spontaneous, sorry, not non-spontaneous, but it also goes to completion, similar complete. And then if delta G is less than negative 30 kJ per mole, it's the opposite, except it's spontaneous and goes to completion. Now, anywhere between 30 and negative 30 is still going to be either spontaneous or non-spontaneous, unless it's zero, but it's only going to be partially complete. Like, the, the reaction from reactions to products is only going to happen partially because of the equilibrium. So that's just something to keep in mind. And I hope that just helps clarify a bit more about Gibbs free energy. So remember that these equations have different contexts. It depends on what you're given. So the first one is kind of a, just a general thing about Gibbs free energy. You still might be required to use it, though. Um, the second one is a very important one. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. That's very common. Delta G equals negative RT long K is also a good one to use. But finally, the final equation is used very specifically for electrochemistry. So just keep that in mind. So I hope this video was helpful in sort of understanding how Gibbs free energy works. Do keep in mind again um, how delta H, delta S, and T affect delta G and how uh, the value of K also affects negative RT long K. And these are just going to be some important things that might come up in the exam that you need to be ready for. Uh, so thank you for watching and hope this video helped.